the utmost adventure. In its final form, it weighs 38 pounds. You could easily toss this on a pack frame for a long hike through the woods. I would say that two people, both with backpacks, you'd get everything you need to prospect with this in one trip if you had to hike through the woods a long distance. In my case, I've got it like this. Everything's held in really, really well. So you can put it in any orientation you like. And I'm just gonna head this down to where we're gonna see how it handles some gravel. For this type of hike, it's a perfect example. I'm just gonna open this up real quick. Allows you to shoulder it. Not half bad. About as any to get set up. Once you've got your utmost adventurer on site, getting it set up is as simple as raising the hopper. Drop your legs into position and we're level end to end. There we are. Now with all of these just finger tight, this is a stainless steel 12 gauge bracket on stainless steel. None of this will ever rust or wear out. It's a fantastic leg bracket. This thing will hold my weight just with two fingers tightening and two fingers to loosen. Let's say you wanted to just lay down on your high banker for the day. <laughs> Not that that's what it's designed to do, but I just want to demonstrate it is definitely overbuilt, will last for years and years and years. Now I will go into the details of how the hopper works, how the screen hopper works and how the double level sluice works. In a nutshell, this is a 20 inch wide sluice box because of the double level down here. And its main advantage is that because it's only 10 inches wide up here, you can put twice the water up here, which helps break up material better. And then you cut that in half down here, which gives you a low and slow flow rate to capture the fine gold better. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. It's a beach box with a hopper that can really chew through material. I use a short length of this nice flexible hose here. It just means that if your lay flat hose isn't the exact perfect length, it still makes this really, really easy to hook up and set up. And the advantage of why I think this is the best spray bar that you can do is you can knock this up and down with your shovel a little bit if you want. You can set this because it's all threaded. And the more you have it pointed in towards the back of the hopper, as you'll see coming up, the more it helps the material out of your hopper. The more you point it down at the front, the more it kind of creates this wave that holds everything back, similar to like a claw. So it's really the best of both worlds, ultimate, ultimate adjustability for any sort of gravel that you're, you're shoveling. And you can even have one shoot up and one shoot down and it kind of spirals around in there. So it just gives you a lot of adjustability. It's very simple and it's what I use on the utmost adventure. Bit of a special moment for us right now because this is the very first shovel to go into the production version of the Utmost Adventurer. And this is hopefully going to demonstrate one of the advantages of this over a beach box. So it's a 20 inch wide Pop and Sun based sluice box, expanded over moss, works really well. But because it's only 10 inches wide and a double level, it has the power to break up some real nasty mucky stuff like this, no problem. You see how that just stuck to my shovel there? I'm gonna throw a few more shovels in here and we'll see it rock. I just want you to notice, I'm not going easy on this thing. I'm just launching the shovel at it. It can handle the abuse. Good, mucky stuff.
by pointing the spray bar down, it does a better hold job. So let's watch that again. Real mucky. Everything's held and washed. Real nice. You just add dirt and it cleans it and you don't have to deal with it. If you get a rock that's stuck up there, you can just tap it with the shovel. I made sure it's clear access to get in here. You can clear access to the screen, but you don't, don't need that. This is just the perfect angle to chew through your material. And this is the perfect angle to clear all of the gravel. Working as expected. So here I just experimented by putting this one up and that one down, just to swirl it a little bit. Whatever material you're running, you just adjust the spray bar and the angles here are right dialed in. I think it washes best with these down like that. Oh yeah, clean. I'm really happy with how the hopper is chewing through ground right now. The screen is working great, even with a little bit of organics on it. We aren't seeing water pouring off the bottom. It's really handy to have your levels everywhere. And just another close up view of everything that's happening down here. This might look a little quick on camera, so I'm gonna take my finger and run it at the same speed as the bubbles. One, 1,000. So it's, it's running really nice, and that's because we have a double level setup here. So I don't know if I can maybe block off the top so you can see there's a whole second, second sluice down underneath there. It is way beyond the end of the season. Most of this ground is frozen. So it's, it's a little optimistic to say we're gonna find a good pay streak and actually be able to show you guys a ton of gold in this video. But I do wanna show you how the high banker runs because I think it's probably one of the best 
uh, like shovel in fine gold high bankers in its weight class, a hundred percent. Nothing can touch this thing. It's it's just I'm really happy with how it's working out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the camera off to Chris, and I'm going to pull this thing apart so you can see all of the fine details that really sets this thing apart and how easy it is to pull apart when you've got sand in there, everything's gritty and grimy, but it's still really easy to pull all the mats out for a cleanup. So let's show you that. Every single part of this, we, we just spent so much time trying to find what would be the most durable and elegant solution to be able to pull your mats out. Step one is the hopper. So why don't you have a look here at the hopper and I'll show you what we did. To begin with, this is a stainless steel screen. This stuff is so incredibly hard and durable. I actually used this thin screen as my hopper wear guard once for about three years, the same screen. It just will not break. And this was the last part of the entire high banker that was not stainless or aluminum. So this is now stainless. I wanted to put that extra level of sort of fit and finish into this box. So you can take this out, say for example, to the beach in Nome, salt water. You don't have to worry about this rusting out. And it's incredibly durable. I used to have a little thumb screw that went through here that held this in place. And that's something that you can lose out in the field. The back of this is just held in. It slips in under a piece of aluminum. Whereas these sides here, there's just a little pin. So this is a stainless steel screw plate that's riveted on and a stainless steel wing bolt. Now I just unscrew the wing bolt. And what's cool about this is just watch, I can't lose this. So as I pull it out, it doesn't go any further, it locks. So that's as far out as this will ever go. On this side, you can see there's a little piece of weld right there. So just that little weld, that prevents this from ever being lost. And this has been running, sure not for very long, maybe about half an hour, but all the sand and all the muck has gotten in here and it just screws right out, real simple. Now, take this and you lift it out. It's that simple. Here's your hopper moss. This is backed moss. So right now, I'm gonna go put this into a tub and I can throw it right back in here. It's just that simple. This will capture, um, actually a surprising amount of gold gets captured up here, but the whole point of this um, being in your hopper, partially as the wear guard and partially this will hold on to black sand, which slowly bleeds into the rest of the sluice. So even though you're surging it with big shovels, it will slowly bleed into the main sluice, allowing your main sluice to capture even better. We just take this guy over here, upside down. Now at this point, there's still a little bit of material in this. And if you let this dry out and you smack it out the next day, you'll get a few more little rocks. But if gold hasn't come out by doing this, you're not gonna lose the gold when you put this back into the box. So we basically, let a little gravel get in here. Ideally, I'd clean this up with a little bit of water out of a gold pan, but let's just use this as an opportunity to see how simple this is. It just slides under there and into place, and that's it. It is now locked. Your wear guard, not only is this really durable stainless, but I've actually tack welded the corners and a few places down the sides and along the bottom. So you'll never have a wire open up because it's, you know, this may get cupped and bent if you just throw giant rocks at this and really abuse this thing, you're never gonna have it, you know, unstitching itself. So this just slides right under that nice, you can see it's tapered up, so it's got a little lip to help it push in, just slides into place. That's it, you're back together. You didn't have to take any wing nuts in or out of the sluice. You just screw these things in and look at that. You don't even have to go all the way in. It's locked into place, it's going nowhere but you can screw it in all the way if you like. This does not need to be removed, but it's incredibly easy to remove. So I'll just knock the rocks off so they don't go down into the sluice. You just slide it out. Back of the screen is bent like this. So that's what holds it in place. It allows the screen to sit on top and sort of bounce and vibrate a little bit as, as the material rolls down. And what we did on this screen is we cut off every second crossbar 
And I found that that helped when you do have a bunch of organic material. You can see how that organic material is able to come through and go down instead of just plug the surface of the screen. And it allows you to dig in worse ground with more grass and stuff without having to brush your screen as often. But that's very easy to just slide in and slide out. Now the screen part of the hopper down here, what I did is I, I lowered the angle of this so that the angle of the screen is as steep as it needs to be. But this is a shallower angle for better fine gold retention. And it's a bit of a shallower angle, um, as, as low as I could go with the dimension so it doesn't bump into the sluice when it's all put away. And all you do is you press this little button under here. Comes in and out. And it's back and ready to go. Slide that out. There's a little hole under here you press up. That lets you grab your mat. Now you've got your backed miner's moss here. And this can now go into the tub as well. Now for the rest of the sluice down here. At the front of the sluice, everything tucks up real tight to the front wall and we've got this splitter here. This splitter divides 50% of the water flow to the bottom box and 50% to the top box. And this is all held in, so I cannot lift this out. I can't lift the tray out. It's locked into place. All I do, same thing as we had up top. There's a little screw on each side. I just screw these out. You don't have to screw them out all the way. And I'm just gonna demonstrate, if I keep screwing these out, they're loose, it's in the back of your truck, they cannot screw out all the way. Those have the same threads welded over and they're just locked into place. So these cannot separate from the sluice. At this point, I can separate the tray. You'll notice that tray came out really, really easily. With a big, long tray like this, first of all, we're not getting a whole bunch of gravel falling down on either side of this tray, which is really good. And second of all, the entire sluice, the sides of the sluice are leaned out at about five degrees, so that when you lift up, it increases the spacing on the sides and just makes this a effortless operation. At this point, the mat slides out. Again, with these mats, if you really, really wanted to let it dry out and smack it out the next day, you'd get a, a, a few little pieces of gravel or something coming out of there. But this is a pretty thin miner's moss. This is only 5 sixteenths of an inch thick. It's a bit of a tighter weave. And I found that this stuff works really good on the fine gold without, like, you're, you're running such a low water flow through this sluice box that you don't need very thick miner's moss. If you have thick miner's moss, the bottom half of your moss doesn't move, it doesn't stay active, and you're just carrying more material home at the end of the day for no reason. This is just like the perfect mix for the fine gold and these low, slow flow rates. The whole tray can be removed just like that. So at this point, I could use my gold pan. Just rinse everything out of here. The bottom tray is held in the same way. You've got these two wing bolts. Remember the top wing bolts, they're all the way out. They're locked into the sluice. They cannot be lost. I just spin these things out. They're nice and big, 5 sixteenths of an inch. They're the same ones I use on these legs. So they're really good, especially if you have gloves on or something when it's this cold, which I probably should have on. Bottom tray. It really comes out easily with the way the sluice is leaned out on the side slightly. I'm glad I did that just so that you don't have that frustrating yanking. You know the way it is if you've used riffle trays before. Here's your mat. 
fits in there really nice. 5 16th inch thick, backed miner's moss. Does a great job on this fine gold. Before I reassemble, I'm just gonna clean the sluice out here. Just slide it up to where it locks in at the front, and then I just screw this in. Right into the front, and the same thing. None of these could have gotten lost because they're sort of welded into position. So that's it. We've got the hopper with a really nice stainless wear guard. We've got the under screen area, which is really nice. I might as well toss the screen back in. That's it. I'm gonna pull my water. And at this point, I actually like to carry the high banker like this from spot to spot. So for example, if I just wanna move eight feet in that direction, cause I'm at the end of this little area of digging. I don't want to walk really far for my shovels. Just pick it up and walk there. So all I would do is I'd grab it by the hopper. You can shoulder it like this. Empty. This thing weighs 38 pounds, which is 17.3 kilograms. Not all that bad when you consider it's a 20 inch wide beach box with a really good hopper system. Um, I don't think anything in this weight range or size range can touch this thing when it comes to fine gold. And if you want to fold her down, well, you just set that down. You set that down, no wing nuts, no bolts, no nothing, tool free. You want it back up again, we bring it up. We set it into one, two, three different settings. It's, it's just, I love the way this all works. It's so late in the year that I don't really suspect that we found a good pay streak. There's just too much frozen ground around here, but we will quickly pan through all of those concentrates just to see if we got lucky. So I did a quick and dirty pan of all those concentrates and you know, for as few shovels as we did and as bad ground as we did, it is kind of cool to see the gold and the garnets. Let's have a close look in here. Definitely an area with a lot of little Garnets. It's actually a pretty, pretty nice one over there. And if we carefully travel up the pan to where the good stuff is, I mean, you're not going to win any uh, competitions here for the most gold found in 20 minutes of digging, but. Uh, Definitely some fine gold in this area, that's for certain. So this here is the utmost adventurer. Please don't buy this if you don't have the finances or the need, but if you do, you can go to utmostoutdoors.com and pick one up today. As far as I'm concerned, I'm gonna hike this thing back to the boat and we'll see you in the next video. Until then, cheers everybody.